Welcome back to FHL Community Episodes. Last time we talked about the first beatitude. And let's just review that uh, real quick. It says in Matthew 5, 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Unless we can experience the utter need for God, sometimes it's hard for us to serve with pure heart. And sometimes, you know, there might be some pretension or there might be, you know, whether intentionally or unintentionally that happens. But again, there are things in our lives that unless we experience our utter need for God, not just for food, you know, uh, poor is, is not just, you know, not enough food or, or whatever. But, you know, once we experience that, that poorness in our heart, uh, that utter need for God, that nothing else matter in the end. That material things become just secondary to really the, the spiritual things that the Lord is going to uh, provide us. Then we can serve with pure heart. We can actually serve with kingdom principles and, the, and with the heart of Jesus. So this second um, beatitude uh, is in uh, Matthew 5, 4. And it says here, Blessed are are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So let me read that again. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This is another weird blessing, you know? It's just like blessed are the poor, right? Now blessed are those who mourn. So it's, it's kind of weird, right? Uh, but uh, so this is another weird blessing that is suited to follow the former beatitude, blessed are the poor. It is customary for the poor to mourn, right? Many times when, when we felt that we don't have enough, when we are poor physically, poor spiritually, we mourn. The Greek word uh, to mourn used in this passage is the strongest word for mourning for the dead. It is the grief and the lamentation for the loss of a loved one. And, you know, losing a loved one is very hard. So, so that's the word, that's the Greek word that's used here is this lamentation, mourning for the dead. This is the feeling of deep sorrow that makes our hearts break and brings tears to our eyes. So how can we find blessing in the morning? Not the morning, but in mourning, right? How can we find blessing if, if you are lamenting, if you have deep sorrow? You know, there's a, um, an Arab proverb that says, sunshine all the time makes a desert. Isn't that, you know, um, powerful? Sunshine all the time makes a desert. I tell you what, I love sunshine. I'm from the Philippines and I love heat, I love sun. But if you have sun all the time, then that could make a desert. So it is hard to find lush vegetation in a place with no rain, right? You say, yeah, I love sunshine. I can live here forever without rain or what? That's, that's not gonna happen because it makes it a desert. There are certain blessed things that only sorrow can produce. And there are sorrows that beget wisdom which gives us strength and brings life. Isn't that very true? That sorrow can give us strength. That sorrow can give us wisdom. That sorrow will give us better perspective in life. And isn't that a blessing? that at the end of the sorrow, then you come out stronger, that you come out with better perspective in life. Many times sorrow teaches us things we could have never learned. And that's very true. And that's probably uh, true to you. That there are things that, that, that you learn after you go into this deep lamentation or deep sorrow. I remember that. Uh, several years ago, I, I was in a depression. And, and sometimes, you know, before 
I look at some fellow pastors that are taking antidepressant, and I was not. And I, I, it's easy for me to, to judge them. And then something happened. And it was a blessing, really, for me. Because when, that, when, when this tragedy happened for me, then depression happened. I tell you what, I cannot break loose out of that. I wake up in the morning, uh, you know, I was depressed. I question myself, why am I feeling like this? I go to bed, I pray, I worship, I do these things, but it's still, I was depressed. And thank God that he, he shortened the time that I was depressed for just one week. But after that, I start to, to uh, understand I start to empathize even better to people who are, who are depressed because of that what happened to me. You see, so again, many times, sorrow teaches us things we could have never learned. It discloses our hurts and our, our shortcomings, but it gives us comfort. Gracious mourners, as Matthew Henry wrote, live a life of repentance, who lament for the corruption of their nature and humanity and their actual transgressions. Can you imagine that? <laughs> you know, when, when, we, leave, when, when, when we mourn and, and we see from the perspective of God that uh, the corruption of our nature and humanity and many, and there are many actual transgressions. Light shines in our despair and God can turn mourning into dancing. And that's a Bible verse, that God can turn our mourning into dancing. And, and sometimes when we don't experience that sorrow, it's hard for us. We may say that it's, it's a good saying, right? Turn your mourning into dancing. But that doesn't make sense to you if you have not really experienced that deep sorrow that turn mourning into dancing. So how do we apply this at Missional Food Pantry? That's a big question, right? So, you know, how does this connect with serving at the food pantry that uh, Matthew 5, 4 says, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Here we go. The first beatitude ta taught us not to be attached to material things but the second beatitude teaches us not to be detached from people. So again, the first beatitude is that we're poor, we, we lack things, we lack material things. But the second beatitude is teaches us not to be detached from people. You see, during depression, some people may be detached. During the time of sorrow, you may want to be detached, but that's, of course, there's time for mourning. But after you come out of the morning, then uh, get connected with people. Get connected with others and then establish relationship with other people because we cannot live by our own selves. God made us a social creature and that's where serving at Food Pantry comes in. As we serve at Food Pantries, our own experience of sorrows opens our view to the things that matter most. So just think about a person who go to a food pantry and, and it's deep sorrow. So it could be somebody died, especially during uh, the COVID of 2020, the COVID-19, that actually hundreds of thousands of people, you know, just like in the United States, uh, died. And many people, some of the people died uh, while they were in hospital and their relatives cannot go. Can you imagine being in that situation and you're a relative or you, you're a son, you're a daughter or, or you're the parent of, of that individual or you cannot even see the last breath of that individual in the hospital, the only ones. And, and thank you to all the nurses and the medical uh, people who help those people go through uh, the, the, the death process. But some people who go to the food pantry, you never know. Some people who go to the food pantry could, could be in this deep sorrow, could be in this lamentation. 
and and sometimes we get so busy we become so systematic we we say yes we need to 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 uh, be fast because there are more people waiting there but we miss the opportunity of touching that one individual right in our own face who is needing more than just food because he or she is going through sorrow. What if you're the person who can actually touch that individual, pray for that individual, come alongside that individual, and that individual, all of a sudden, with the grace of God, start the light shining into his or her soul and break depression broke because that person went to the food pantry and you were the one who served that, that, that individual. I mean, we're going deep on this, but this is real life. These are, these are the things that, that happen at food pantry beyond our knowledge. And God give us opportunities to be able to, to be his hands, literally his hands and feet at Missional Food Pantry. See, all people matter to God. And that's why when they come to, to, to the food pantry, whether, whether they are driving a nicer car than you, it's easy to judge. But you just never know what he or she is, is going through in life. The same comfort that we receive from our sorrows give us a larger perspective about serving others. So your own sorrows, you can turn that, that experience, that depression, and, and, and look at that as you are serving. Not to be sorrowful, but to come alongside the individual who is going through that lamentation. All of a sudden, food become secondary only to relationships, right? And that's why we talk about over and over our motto is it's not about food, it's about people. It's about the people we serve and the people that we serve we, or, or the people that, we, that serve with us and the people that we serve. We sympathize with the afflictions of others. We weep with them. We hurt with them and offer them the same comfort that we ourselves receive in our times of sorrows. So just think about that as you, uh, even before you go to food pantry. And that's what during, um, at, at our training, we say we gotta pray first. We need to apprehend the, the reality of the kingdom first in, in us so that we can release the kingdom principles, these beatitudes, as we serve in practical ways with people. It's beyond just talking about it, it's actually embodying the beatitudes as we serve at food pantries. To mourn or to be sorrowful with the suffering of others render, renders us to purely serve with compassion and excellence. Can you imagine that? To mourn or to be sorrowful with the sufferings of others renders us to purely serve with compassion and excellence. Nothing is gonna be perfect. You know, we train not to be perfect, we train to do things right. We train to be excellent. And once people, imagine when the sorrowful individual come to your food pantry and then you serve them with honor, with dignity, and with excellence. And that makes their day and even makes a difference in their lives. Our attitude reflects the comfort that we receive and brings hope to others. So again, at Missional Food Pantry, it's, it's about our attitude. It's not just so, we're so good, we are just so trained operationally that we systematically streamline things at Food Pantry, but our attitude needs adjustment, as, what, as some other people say. You know, if, if you are really burdened and you really, you know, it's hard for you to maybe relate uh, with other people and your sorrow is still pulling you down, maybe it's not the right time to serve at the food pantry because we create this atmosphere all around us 
and if we are sorrowful, and, and if we don't empathize with people, if we are negative, if we are just like short on people, then it's, it's, it could affect not just that individual that you serve at the food pantry level, but that individual may go home to his family feeling frustrated, and then there you go. The atmosphere of negativity happens also in their, in, in their lives. So our attitude reflects, and the comfort that we receive brings hope to people. Lastly is that it brings hope uh, to people. And that's the greatest privilege that we can ever have at the food pantry. It's beyond just giving away food. And that in the process of giving away food, we bring hope, hopefully, as we serve with dignity, honoring others, and with excellence. Hopefully that's helpful today. And remember, you have the power to bring kingdom solutions and resources to the world problems and challenges. Until then, God bless you, and we will see you at the next FHL Community episode. We have a thousand boxes, uh, food boxes that we are sharing with other food pantries. Esperanza Viva um, received uh, this kind of delivery also, so they recommended Faith, Hope and Love, and now we are receiving a thousand today, and then tomorrow, Thursday, we'll be receiving another thousand at our South Side hub, which, will, which is Cross Church. When I say, if you, just based on the work I do and how people don't even have enough food to bring to visits for their children, they don't eat food themselves. This is amazing. This is an amazing opportunity uh, where people are actually being fed spiritually and uh, physically. So I just think it's a blessing. leaders that I know is Jesus Christ. He was a servant. We as people are supposed to serve others. That is why we are here. We are not here for anything else other to be a blessing to other people. And I just believe that if you try God, you will never, never regret it.